the Chantry teaches us that it is the hubris of men which brought the Darkspawn into our world. The mages had sought to usurp heaven, but instead, they destroyed it. They were cast out, twisted and cursed by their own They returned as monsters. They became a blight upon the lands, unstoppable and relentless. The Dwarven Kingdoms were the first to fall, and from the deep roads, the dark spawn drove at us again and again until finally we neared annihilation. Until the Grey Wardens came. Men and women from every race, warriors and mages, barbarians and kings. The Grey Wardens sacrificed everything to stem the tide of darkness and prevail. It has been four centuries since that victory, and we have kept our vigil. We have watched and waited for the Darkspawn to return. But those who once called us heroes have forgotten. We are few now, and our warnings have been ignored for too long. even be too late, for I have seen with my own eyes what lies on the horizon. Maker, help us all. Greetings. How do you do? Oops, where's my head? Charmed, I'm sure.
Deep beneath the frost-back mountains sits Orzammar, the larger of two known remaining dwarven cities in the world. Orzammar was once the seat of a major empire connected by tunnels called Deep Roads, which stretched thousands of miles. The city now stands alone, cut off from the rest of the dwarven ancestral lands by the Darkspawn incursion. Secure in Orzammar's impregnable construction, the dwarven noble houses continue their centuries-old power struggles. Assassination and blackmail are commonplace, but the appearance of honor is paramount. You are the second child of King Endron of House Idukan, the ninth Idukan ruler elected by the noble assembly. You grew up in a world rife with political intrigue and have struggled against brothers and cousins for honor and prestige. Today, a feast celebrates your first military commission, the opening move towards real power in the ever-changing game of Dwarven politics. Greetings, my lord. You are dressed and ready. Excellent. I couldn't find the armor's matching dagger, but I scrounged up a rather fancy longsword. Do you wish to wear your shield to the noble's feast? Certainly. You'll cut an imposing picture out there. Of course, if every other noble has a shield and three swords, you'll feel awfully underdressed. One can't take all this marching about and speech-making too seriously. Moving on to the business at hand. The king expects you to make an appearance at the feast, but there's no rush. The noble family heads will spend hours boring your father with petitions and petty grievances. Out and about. I saw them on my way here, browsing the shops. As part of the celebrations, permits have been auctioned off to members of the merchant caste who wish to sell wares in the Diamond Quarter. Lord Harrowmont has also opened up the provings for young warriors to test their mettle before tomorrow's battle. Perhaps we should go show them what single combat is really all about. And by we, I mean you. <laughs> I'll practice my cheering. You remember last year's open proving? It took your father Smith six hours to remove my helmet. I'm not meant for single combat. I fight as my lord's second in shield. That's enough for me. Right behind you, my lord. The day is ours until the feast.
No sign of trouble. My Lord Balin? Oh! Oh, I I'm sorry. I am so sorry, Your Highness. I'm sorry. I thought you were Prince Balin coming down the hall. I... forgive me. I will show myself out with your leave, my lord. Go. Thank you. I will go now. All done. No sign of trouble here. Sure you want to go to the feast now? I doubt we can escape to see the provings once we're inside. A great many nobles will want your ear today. If we're going to have some fun, we should go to the provings now. I can't wait to see who's fighting today. Father has allowed the merchants to show their wares in the Diamond Quarter during these celebrations. I'm sure we can work this out reasonably. It's in the records. There's nothing I can do. Please, Master Volney. My work is accredited by the Shaper. These books are lies written by the enemies of House Volney. I write only what I find in the ancient records. Lord Idukin, you can vouch for my work, can't you? Your father loved my history of Idukin, Paragon King, Peacemaker. The king, as well as several other lords, are quite fond of his work. He writes of the ancient paragons. This worm has written a book that slanders my house. It doesn't matter. It's all lies. My work tells the stories of all those raised to paragons in the last 500 years. When the assembly names a paragon, that man or woman is then, by definition, everything one can aspire to be in the world. They form their own noble houses and are revered as living ancestors. But paragons start off as men. Volney was more than a man. Idukin was much loved, but he was still a man. He was plagued by melancholy, and his fervor regarding Orzammar's safety bordered on obsession. When Idukin was proposed as a paragon, only one lord in the assembly objected. The others savagely hacked him to death. Idukin's motion passed without a single dissenting vote. Unlike Volney, is that what you mean, old man? Volney became a paragon by the narrowest margin in history. One vote. A vote mired in rumors of intimidation, intrigue, and outright bribery. The records of that vote are kept in the shape of it and are a matter of fact. Not liking history doesn't make it any less true. You're taking his side? What if he published a book like this about your paragon Idukin? Yon, this is not finished. That fool has no idea how weak his house is or how low he sits in it. 
Shall I have him killed, my lord? Understood. You've shown yourself more daring and aggressive today than most believed of you. Someday I hope to write of the great exploits you are sure to perform. Word has been sent. He won't live past the hour. You've shown House Idukin a friend to research, history, and the glory of our people. Of course. A copy of A History of Idukin, Paragon King and Peacemaker, perhaps? Congratulations on your commission. The finest in home decorations! Did you see those no- Dyed with the finest saffron and indigo and embroidered by skilled woven trade. Congratulations on being named commander, my lord. So I pay your exorbitant price. Oh. My lord Idukin, you honor me by visiting my humble booth. May I show you my wares? Because he has forgotten his place. Forgive me, your highness. This looks to be mostly fabrics from the human lands. These merchants form alliances with those who have abandoned our ways to live on the surface. As you say, perhaps the other booths? They say they are going to strike a blow with the horde. The they are active. Nothing beats a good set of steel cutlery. Our trust follow, big brother. How surprising to run into you out among the common folk. Especially since duty requires that you attend our King Father at the feast today. Have you so little respect for him to disregard his wishes on a day set aside for you? Lord Harrowmont told me we wouldn't be needed for hours at least. Silence! If I want the opinion of my sibling second, I will ask for it. Yes, your highness. I speak to lower houses and castes as they should be spoken to. Now do as I say. Your lack of a sense of duty to your house is obvious. I can't imagine why you are receiving a commission. I expect after tomorrow I'll spend much time apologizing to the heads of the noble houses for the deaths of their children under your incompetent command. That's a bit harsh, isn't it, Trian? As heir to the throne, it is my duty to impart wisdom and judgment upon those who need it. Now then, you, get to the feast! I'd advise you to watch that tongue, dear sibling. Father will not live forever. Come, Balin. That was fun. Nothing like being talked down to by the next king. That it is. Let's get back to enjoying it, shall we? Look at this piece, darling. My lord, I do can... Nothing here rivals your them. amazing I do can armor, but if you wish something made. You know very well how Saidukin has its own royal armorers. Of course. Forgive me. Your Highness's legendary prowess is matched only by your kindness. I buy only the finest iron ore, and personally oversee the armor's crafting by the most skillful of the smith cast. Yes, my lord. Nonsense, woman. Your words bring shame upon our house. See how the edges are rough and pitted? Would you compare this to Bronca's work? Trust a woman to speak of things she doesn't understand. Back safely. What about that one? I, I doubt he's up to the task. I'm not going down that road again. Oh, I would love to end up with a redhead. 
Would that Sir Blackstone were a noble, hmm? Stand up straight. They're coming. What have we here? Two handsome, strapping noble lords. You both look so grand. And isn't this the man of the hour, the king's son? Who's your friend, my lord? Another noble from the honored house I do in? Oh, then not a noble? No, Telly, not a noble. Stone your thick sometimes. They're noble hunters, my lord. A man takes his caste from his father, and these women hope to bear a noble lord's son. If one is successful, she's raised up to concubine in the noble house to care for her child. It provides new sword arms for the house, and many nobles look favorably on such women. You're the most appealing, obviously. A noble from the best house there is. Handsome, too. Are you interested in a bit of bedded diversion? Shall I come to your chambers after the ceremony, then? I talk to him first. I want him. He's looking for a woman, Telly, not a little girl. I'm Marty, and I know how to give my lord a night he'll remember. Oh, my lord has his energy about him. There will be no three to a bed, if that's what you're thinking. We both require full experiences all to ourselves. If you think you can manage us both, though... This should prove most interesting. We will wait for you together, my lord, and show you the proper way to celebrate a princely commission. Invest in the next great trade expedition! Only the freshest food for your noble table. Greetings, my lord Idukin. I am so honored to have you visit my booth. I have a proposition, but I dared not approach. Yet you dare now. Very well then, speak. Um, yes, just so. Here is the thing. What I mean to say is... Sorry. So nervous. I had a dagger made for you as a gift for your first command. I uh, sent a messenger to deliver the dagger to you. Prince Trian had him thrown out. I don't know what offense he caused, but I had him beaten severely. Here, here it is, your highness. That's an amazing piece, merchant. You do me much honor, sir. The blade has been crafted over a period of two years by masters of every art. I wish to bless the Lord's first command, and hope that someday, when he rules, he will wear it. Tree and his heir. He will rule when King Endrin returns to the stone. If the assembly wills it. Forgive me, sir, but whispers say the second child of Endrin will be chosen. Whispers indeed. It's a princely gift. If Trian recognizes it, though, it may send the wrong message. Or the right one, depending on your view. Thank you. You bring uncountable honor to me. What he means is that you'll bring uncountable gold to him if he wear that piece in public. You bring great glory to Lord Idukin, here, in my booth? I am so... Oh. He's fainted. You make quite the impression these days. Is it hard to be the king's child, never able to just blend in? As are we all. Shall we move along? My lord, are you heading to the Proving Arena?
We have been charged with the task of escorting you to the Proving Grounds. I clean forgot about that. Forgive me, I should have informed you sooner. The King decided you were not to travel through the commons unguarded. I did mention the merchants that won permits to show their goods in the Diamond Quarter. There were only so many permits auctioned off, and quite a few were turned away. Your father fears you will be harassed on the way to the Proving. I do not question the King. Will we be leaving then? We are at your command. I yearn to face the Darkspawn and prove my worth as your second. May the stone support us, and the ancestors look down with pride. Not much that you don't already know. My father's father was a great hero of the Deep Roads excursions and raised the family to the top of the warrior caste. He was even nominated to join the assembly and found a noble house, but the honor was in the nomination. He wasn't afforded a single vote. My father served your father for many years, and now I serve you. As you will. Your Highness, it is an honor to have you here. Have you come to watch these brave warriors do battle in your honor? Your Highness, this proving is in your honor. Then honor him by doing as he says. My Lord Idukin will fight in this proving. Of course, it is well within your rights. Men and women of Orzammar, we have a late entry to these provings, held on the eve of battle for the honor of House Idukan. I give you the Lord Idukan himself! Are you ready for your first match? And let us begin! This is a glory proving, fought under the watchful eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar, for the honor of House Idukan. Lord Idukan will fight Alair Bimo, youngest son of Lord Bimo. You honor me with this match. First warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! All the noise and bother. And so I shall. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is Lord Idukan. That was quite a fight. Alair Bimo is no slouch with that hammer. Are you ready for your next opponent? Adal Helmi, a woman, your highness. She's a tenacious fighter. Excellent. Let us go. This is a glory proving. Fought under the watchful eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar. Idukan. 
Lord Iducan will fight a doll Helmi, eldest daughter of Lady Helmi. Honor and glory to your house, your highness. First warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! Delighted. If you must. Come, let's shed some blood. As you desire. All right. Delighted. <laughs> The winner is Lord Idukan. I'm proud to serve the Idukans. That was a crowd placer. Many were waiting to see that woman put in her place. Sir Blackstone is your next opponent. Are you ready to face him? One of the best of the warrior cast. He achieved glory in close combat assaults in the deep roads. Then let us begin. This is a glory proving. Fought under the watchful eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar, for the honor of House Idukan. Lord Idukan will fight Sir Blackstone, Deep Road Squad Leader of the Warrior Cast. This is your education, child. Try to learn as you bleed. First warrior to fall is vanquished. Fight! Of course. Now, this is more like it. Why do they bother? The winner is Lord Idukan. Well done. You have proven that even the best of the warrior caste cannot match a noble Idukan. Friendland Ivo is your final opponent. He too has had many victories today. Are you ready to face him, or will you rest first? He is a decorated fighter who prefers unusual weapons and rarely fights with the same techniques twice. Hasaivo is relatively inconsequential, but Franlin may change it. He's expected to take a full command of his own soon. Very good. This is a glory proving. Fought under the watchful eyes of the Paragons of Orzammar. For the honor of House Idukan. It is down to just two warriors. With backbones of stone and wheels of iron, they have defeated all others this day. Lord Idukan will fight Frantlin Ivo, second son of Lord Ivo. You fight well. I wish you glory today and glory tomorrow. First warrior to fall is vanquished. The victor is champion! Fight! I'm going to destroy You will fall! And so I shall. The winner is Lord Idukan! Congratulations! Friend and Ivo is as fierce a competitor as I've ever seen. You vanquished every warrior of note in today's proving. The ceremonial helm, commissioned by your father for today's winner, is yours.
Your glory honors every warrior here. Much glory was brought to your house tonight. My lord? Your wish is our command. My lord? You honor me, your honor. My thanks. House Idukin is blessed to have you. Look, the Grey Wardens Lord, are here. I Might I the raid tomorrow must be more than a standard mission. The Wardens only go where the Darkspawn are the greatest threat. Well played with young Brinton. My lord. Many thanks for your willingness to hear me out, my lord. I wish to speak to you of a matter most urgent. It looks as if the heads of House Bimo and Mino are keeping your father busy, which leaves you plenty of time for our dear old friend, Lord Dace. You're a credit to your caste, Sir Gorham. I've always said so. If I had a daughter, I'd give her to you and make you the noble you deserve to be. You honor me, my lord. First, let me congratulate you on your commission. Two of King Endrin's children now commissioned war leaders. It does great honor to your house. Ha! <laughs> no, I surely did not. Let us just pretend we spent another ten minutes Wishing good things on each other's houses, yes? Uh, there is a vote coming before the assembly next week. And a word from you could go a long way towards helping our cause. Well, you do cut to the point, don't you? You'll be quite a shock if you ever join the assembly. We are so fond of our doublespeak. I have no desire to obligate you or force your hand. I propose a mutually beneficial arrangement. The vote concerns the status of the so-called surface caste. Lost to the stone, air-touched, and so forth. Centuries ago, narrow-minded men declared that any dwarf who left to live on the surface forfeited his caste, and his house if noble. That he was, in essence, no longer a dwarf. I seek only to remedy an injustice, to retie the bonds of anyone who can trace himself to one of the noble houses wherever he may live. 
please, agree to speak for this noble cause. Those on the surface are our lifeline. They facilitate trade with the surface. They're honorable and, uh, uh, let's be honest. I don't care a whit for those who have wandered from the stone. My wife, however, is a gem of a different color. She has a cousin, a useless sort, but she's quite fond of him. He joined a speculative venture to the surface, hoping to make his fortune, and went bust. Now he wishes to come home, but he cannot, for he has no house and would be castless. For my wife's sake, I take up his cause. Will you lend me your voice? I keep my ears to the stone, my lord. I hear many things, some of which could be a great help during your mission tomorrow. A little forewarning to help your forearming, if you know what I mean. Saving for a run for the assembly? <sighs> Never mind. If hard currency is what you wish, hard currency is what you will have. How does a hundred sovereigns sound? When your father presents you to the noble houses, I will ask for your opinion on the matter. You have merely to say that you feel our surface brothers should be returned their noble rights. What could be more simple? Your mother would melt the stone if she knew what you just did. Do not mock me, boy. Lord Dace is playing you false. Go ahead, be his puppet. Your first command will be marked by every major house turning their back on you. If you are to play in the games of the Assembly, make sure you know the motivations of the players. Last spring, a guild from the Merchant Cast invested heavily in an expedition with a guild from the surface. Lord Dace backed the Merchant Guild, pouring a great deal of money into the venture. The expedition was a disaster. Lord Dace lost a great deal of money and prestige. The Surface Guild has no way to repay the investment, but it does have several leading members who are descended from noble houses. House Helmy, Bimo, I Dukin. She's saying that if the air touched dwarves have their connections to their houses restored, you'll end up footing the bill for Lord Dace's disaster. Oh, if I were 20 years younger, I'd bed you just to get some of that quick wit in my house. Your house and mine would be forced to pay the servicers' kin debts. It would be a great victory for Lord Dace. The generations ago. Will you humiliate your house and your father for them? Do what you will, then. It's your honor that hangs in the balance. You return. Were my instructions unclear? And what did she have to say? I see. Some preposterous story, I'm sure. I suppose it could, I mean... Well, it's the spirit of the law that's important, right? Our poor, disenfranchised service brothers. Ah, <laughs> well played, your highness. Welcome to Assembly Politics. Now, if you'll excuse me... You've won. Don't be stupid about it. You forget who you're speaking to. This is the guest of honor and child of the First House of Orzammar. For now, we shall see what the future holds. Trian's grasp on the throne is in no way certain, and much can happen before then. Now let me be. Lords! Ladies! Our Lord Idukan has challenged the honor of Lord Dace! What's this? My son is already testing his reach? Fantastic! I thought tonight would be all talk and drink. My lord, are you sure you wish to do this? You realize that it is Lord Dace's son, Mandar, a formidable duelist. 
who will defend the honor of House Dace in approving. Three-time champion of the Great Provings, much decorated and heir to House Dace. Very well. There is to be a proving, then. Let the ancestors judge who has the right of their cause. To the proving grounds! Men and women, lords and ladies, may I have your attention, please? We are gifted to have in our presence the Lord Idukan, in whose honor today's provings were fought. Today, House Idukan makes a challenge of honor against House Dace. These two brave combatants have come to prove the righteousness of their causes. The proving begins now! Of course. The proving is at an end. Mandar Dace has been found wanting by the ancestors. And House Dace is guilty of dishonoring House Idukan. This is my fault. My son has died defending my honor. I am sorry for your loss, Ronus. It was the Ancestors' will. Yes, the Ancestors, I... I'm sorry. Excuse me, my king. May House Edukan grow in strength and power. Greetings, my Lord Idukan. It is an honor to meet you at last. Not as such, but your father never misses a chance to boast of your skill and bravery. He says you may be the quickest fighter in all of House Idukan. I have no doubt it is deserved. We need more Grey Wardens like you, and quickly. Even as the Darkspawn weaken here in Ozimor, they are stirring on the surface. A blight has begun. Soon the fight must go beyond the deep roads, lest the Darkspawn threaten all the world. You know of our dedication to destroying the Darkspawn, our frontline presence during a blight. What else would you know? Over the centuries, many dwarves have made names for themselves in our order. These days, however, there are fewer dwarves and thus even fewer dwarven Grey Wardens. A pity, since dwarven warriors have the most experience fighting Darkspawn. Being a Grey Warden means abandoning all ties to your old life. It means dedicating yourself to destroying the Darkspawn. I'm afraid not. Grey Wardens go where they're needed most. Right now, that is on the surface at the ruins of Ostagar, where the human king gathers his armies to face the Blight. Truly. Then I will speak to your father after tomorrow's battle. I have my doubts he will relent, but there is always hope. Until then, good luck to you. Show the Darkspawn what your people are made of. When he mistimed that backswing, I knew he was going down. Poor bastard. Still, couldn't wish it on a nicer house. Well put. Our new commander taught House Dace a serious lesson. The hour is late. These Deshers have waited patiently, as have the Grey Wardens. Are you ready to be presented to the heads of the Noble Houses? 
So dutiful. <laughs> Very well. Let us begin. Lords, ladies, grant me a moment of your time. We are here today so I may present to you my second eldest child, blessed by the stone and born of the blood that ran in the veins of the Paragon Idukan. Who would pose a question to the prospective commander? Who seeks to know the prospect better? No? Very well then. The ritual is complete. I give you Orzammar's next commander. Tomorrow, our newest commander will lead part of a mission to strike a great blow to the Darkspawn. Not only does this recover access to some of our most important minds, but it also allows our honored guest Duncan, head of Ferelden's Grey Wardens, to strike far into the deep roads. Thank you, King Endrin. While the Darkspawn seem to withdraw, it is only because they are massing on the surface. This could mean a blight, and my men and I will discover the truth. We are honored to have you with us, my friend. Now, feast, drink, and celebrate, for the morning brings battle! As for you, my new commander, find your brother Trian and send him to me. He may be watching the Provins, or getting some rest in his rooms. Walk well, commander. I have finished. So you are a commander now, in name at least. Shouldn't you be attending our King Father? The world does not stop and start with your meager achievements, not even tonight. Now, do you have some purpose in bothering us? You push your luck. Balin, get to bed. We have a big day tomorrow. I will see what our father wishes from his heir. All day I've put up with that. He can really grate on the nerves. Is it also his right to secure his own power at the expense of everyone around him? Unfortunately, I am. Trian has begun to move against you. I never thought his much-proclaimed honor would allow him to actually act on his jealousy. Big Brother, Trian is going to try to kill you. I 
I overheard him giving orders to some of his men, and I was shocked. Then it began to make sense. Trian's decided you're a threat to his taking the throne. Maybe he's right. He fears what you are becoming, in the eyes of the people and the Assembly. Trian's the named prince, but only the Assembly can proclaim a king. It would be unusual for the Assembly to ignore the king's choice, but it does happen. The founder of House Bimo became a paragon and king in one move from the Assembly, and he was a commoner. That was an extraordinary case, but at least a half dozen times the Assembly named a lesser family member, or even someone from another house, as king. Usually, it's the popular younger brother of an undesirable prince. You can't turn a blind eye to this! Your life is in serious danger! You are as noble and stubborn as ever. After Trian kills you, I suppose I will be the heir. But that's not how I would wish it. Enjoy your command tomorrow. I fear it will be short-lived. Come, my lord. The hour grows late and you need your rest. And I will be right outside the door. Maybe a little farther outside the door. You probably don't. Trion and his men will clear the way for the Grey Wardens to descend into the easternmost caverns. Those caverns are still infested by the worst of the Darkspawn. We cannot risk our own troops in there. Understood, Lord Haramont. We should be able to sense the Darkspawn and avoid them once the way is open. May the Paragons favor you, and the stone catch you if you fall. Come, men! Glory awaits! Balin, you and your men will second the king, clearing the main road. Don't you think it looks a little cowardly to allow these humans to take our place where the fighting is thickest? Are you questioning the battle plan? Of course not. I'm sure your caution is for the glory of us all. Enough, Balin! Take your men and make ready. Haramont and I need to have words with your sibling. Good luck, my brother. Your father has a special mission for you. In the eastern deep roads, there is a secret door carved into the stone. The door leads to a taig, abandoned long ago by your ancestors. The Darkspawn have made it impossible to reach. My father believed that the shield of the paragon Idukan remains in that taig, under the stones of the central room. We claim the shield and glory will be yours. My father's writings speak only of the shield. There may be countless other treasures, but only the shield matters. We've sent two scouts ahead to make sure the tunnels are cleared, but be careful. One of the scouts will meet you at the first crossroads you come to. The second will be further in. When you get to the door, use your signet ring to open it. Questions? The crossroads where you meet the first scout will be the rendezvous point. There you can present the shield to the lords and demonstrate the strength of Idukan. May the ancestors watch over you, my child. I would watch out, where are you? 
he there? That's a trap. You made it, Commander. Did you run afoul of any Darkspawn? We didn't expect any activity in these tunnels at all. Once I finished scouting the tunnels, I hid here to avoid the Darkspawn. Most tunnels are dead ends. The one we want is swarming with those fiends. It's going to be a fight. As you say, Onward then. I would watch out where are you. See there? That's a trap. I would watch out.
You're here. I thought the Darkspawn had got you for sure. And I'll make sure I'm behind you if we're swarmed. We want the tunnel ahead, but there are darkspawn tracks all over it. Be careful. Well, abandoned isn't vacant, apparently. Still, two months ago we couldn't get within a mile of this place. I'll follow your lead, Commander. Right behind you. We should hurry. Time for more dark spawn, I see. See there? That's a trap. I will watch out. I shall. Take that! Looks like someone beat us to the door. This Darkspawn body is still fresh. Whoever opened the door is most likely still in there. Yes, my lord. So glad you could finally join us. We feared you'd gotten eaten by Darkspawn. Turns out the shield isn't quite as easy to retrieve as I was led to believe. I wager you know where it is, though. So maybe you tell me where it is, and I won't mutilate your body so bad your father doesn't recognize you. I'm your better, that's who. And as to how I got in, that's a question you'll have to ask the stone after I butcher you. Now where's the shield? Bit for bite, huh? Both of us banking on killing the other and losing nothing by the telling? Very well. One of Prince Trian's men brought me this ring. It opened the door just fine. Now where is the sodding shield? Just kill them, boys. We'll find this shield on our own. They're all so eager to die. All right. Be off. Desire, delight, and sod it all. I'm hurt. I'm no good to you like this. Delighted. Desire, and so I shall. <laughs> All right. Of course. Yeah.
Is that really tree and signet ring? Or it may be a warning for us to keep our guard up. I will guard your back. Now perhaps we should find the shield. I would watch out where are you. See there? That's a trap. I would watch out, where are you? Where are we now? Dare I even ask? And so I shall. See there? That's a trap. We get the shield. You two, see if you can spot anything. You're looking bright-eyed this morning, my lord. Feeling a little more... Uh, virile? Ready to slay the Darkspawn with sheer masculine power? Oh, believe me, I was doing... I can't believe you didn't invite me. Anyway, we should keep moving. Genlocks aren't likely to stop and commiserate with my inadequacies. Hmm. It seems some of these tiles are different from the others.
That's it. We've got it. It doesn't look like much. The skill of our crafters has come far since then. But still, the shield of Idukan. If it helps rally the troops, it's a good thing. Back in the direction we came from, at the crossroads. To the crossroads. Mercenaries. Or dark. Us, this would be the perfect place for an ambush. We've got the shield, and we're all alone out here. Of course. What's that you're muttering about? Right you are, Commander. Trian. It must have been a Darkspawn attack. This doesn't look like Darkspawn. No bites, no scratches, no mutilation. Someone's coming. Hurry, Father, before it's too... Ancestors, what has happened here? It seems we weren't fast enough. Valand was right. My son, tell me this isn't what it looks like. He killed Trian, just as Trian said he would. My lord is innocent. Sir Gorham, your loyalty makes you a useless witness. It falls to others to tell the story. You, Scout, what happened here? Trian and his men were here early. It seems they'd done battle with the Darkspawn. Lord Idukin came up to them all friendly-like, but when we got close, he ordered us to attack. Stop him! Take his weapons! I think we've seen enough. No. If the scout were lying, I might have done much the same. 
I will not drag my son back to Orzammar in chains without hearing from Frandlin Ivo. Frandlin Ivo, you are a good and noble man. Did the scout speak the truth? He... he did, my lord. It was terrible. Prince Trian didn't stand a chance. Afterward, my lord stripped his signet ring. You treacherous bastard! Silence, Gorum! Do you have anything else to say, my son? The assembly will see through you. Everyone... Find him. He will be judged before the assembly. To Orzammar. sooner had they allowed it. How are you? I understand. It's going to get worse, though. Valen has taken Trian's place in the assembly. He introduced a motion to condemn you immediately, and it easily passed. He had fully half the assembly ready to vote on something completely against tradition and justice. He must have been making deals and alliances for months, if not years. He's more clever than either of us ever thought. Some of the lords, especially Harrowmont, are suspicious of Balin's instant rise to power. They are rallying, but far too slowly. The Assembly has already sentenced My knighthood will be stripped, my name torn from my family records. But I will be allowed to attempt some sort of life on the surface. Lord Harrowmont moved for a similar exile for you, but Balin's supporters overwhelmed him. You are to be sealed in the deep roads to fight Darkspawn until you are overwhelmed and killed. Lord Harrowmont says the King has taken ill. He couldn't bear losing two of his children at once. Lord Harrowmont gave me access to see you so I could tell you this. Duncan and the Grey Wardens are still in the deep roads, in tunnels connected to those you are to be left in. If you survive long enough to find the Grey Wardens, you may be able to escape with Duncan. Well, perhaps this was meant to be. If you can find them, I'm sure you can join them and escape the Deep Roads. They're down there somewhere. It's just a matter of surviving long enough to track them. I begged to go with you and fight at your side, but Balin's pet nobles wouldn't hear of it. I would give up all the safety in the world to go down this dark path with you. Our time is up. May the Paragons guide your sword and the stone hold you up. I will always be your man, my lord Idukin. They are ready for you now. Here is the prisoner, Lord Harrowmont. Having been found guilty of fratricide by the Assembly of Orzammar, you are hereby sentenced to exile and death. Your name is from this point forward stripped from the records. You are no longer a person, nor a memory. You are to be cast into the deep roads with only sword and shield, there to redeem your life by fighting the enemies of Orzammar until your death. Do you have anything to say before the sentence is carried out? I understand your anger. 
You should have been allowed to defend yourself. Had I the power to stop this, I would have. Look me in the eye and tell me you didn't do this. For your father's sake. I believe you. That means Balin planned this from the start. Believe me, I will spend the rest of my days making sure Balin does not profit by his deeds. Your father asked me to give these to you. This sword and shield are of fine dwarven make. Strike a blow at our enemies. He is old, and this tragedy has hit him hard. He will rest better now, though, knowing the truth. I will. Open the doors and let the condemned walk through. May the stone accept you when you fall. Yes. I will watch out, where are you? See there? That's a trap. <laughs> I would watch out, where are you? As you desire, delighted. As you desire. All over now. Ah, another battle speeds our way. And so I shall. Right. Oh. 
Agency there. That's a trap. <laughs> Delighted. <laughs> I would watch out where I am. As and so I shall. By the Maker, it's a dwarf. Lord Idukan, what are you doing here alone? Where are your troops? Ah, you have been made to walk the deep roads then. You mean you were exiled? What happened? I do not think matters of dwarven honor are any business of ours. You need not answer, friend. Lord Trian? I see. The brutal intrigue of the Dwarven Court continues then. Your father intimated as much. There is no reason for you to walk these deep roads and die for something you did not do. You have already proven yourself both resourceful and skilled, and I would expect nothing less from an Idukan. When last we spoke, you told me you wished to join our order. I imagine this isn't quite what you meant. But you may still find great honor here. As leader of the Grey Wardens in Ferelden, I would like to formally invite you to join our order. Then welcome. We leave immediately for Ostagar to join with the human forces facing the Darkspawn hordes led by King Kaelin. Stay close. There are still dark spawn around every corner.
We will be traveling south through the hinterlands to the ruin of Ostagar, on the edges of the Korkari Wilds. The Tevinter Imperium built Ostagar long ago to prevent the Wilders from invading the northern lowlands. It's fitting we make our stand here, even if we face a different foe within that forest. The King's forces have clashed with the Darkspawn several times, but here is where the bulk of the Horde will show itself. There are only a few Grey Wardens within Ferelden at the moment, but all of us are here. This blight must be stopped, here and now. If it spreads to the north, Ferelden will fall. Ho there, Duncan. King Caelan. I didn't expect a... A royal welcome? I was beginning to worry you'd miss all the fun. Not if I could help it, Your Majesty. Then I'll have the mighty Duncan at my side in battle after all. Glorious. The other wardens told me you'd found a promising recruit. I take it this is he? Allow me to introduce you, Your Majesty. There's no need to be so formal, Duncan. We'll be shedding blood together after... Might I know your name? Pleased to meet you. The Grey Wardens are desperate to bolster their numbers, and I, for one, am glad to help them. It's good to see one of the honorable stout folk outside Audemars. I've always wanted to learn more. Perhaps you could enlighten me sometime. I meant after we defeat the Blight, of course. I doubt Logain will give me a moment's rest until then. I've been to Orzammar. King Endrin invited my father to a grand proving long ago. How does Endrin fare these days? Well, it seems your story may be even more interesting than I suspected. Allow me to be the first to welcome you to Ostagar. The Wardens will benefit greatly with you in their ranks. I'm sorry to cut this short, but I should return to my tent. Loghain waits eagerly to bore me with his strategies. Your uncle sends his greetings and reminds you that Redcliffe forces could be here in less than a week. Ha! <laughs> Eamon just wants in on the glory. And tomorrow should be no different. I'm not even sure this is a true blight. There are plenty of darkspawn on the field, but alas, we've seen no sign of an archdemon. Disappointed, Your Majesty? I'd hoped for a war like in the tales. A king riding with the fabled Grey Wardens against a tainted god. But I suppose this will have to do. I must go before Loghain sends out a search party. Farewell, Grey Wardens. What the king said is true. They've won several battles against the Darkspawn here. Despite the victory so far, the Darkspawn horde grows larger with each passing day. By now, they look to outnumber us. I know there is an archdemon behind this, but I cannot ask the King to act solely on my feelings. Wait for reinforcements. We sent a call out west to the Grey Wardens of Orlais, but it will be many days before they can join us. Our numbers in Ferelden are too few. We must do what we can and look to Terran Loghain to make up the difference. To that end, we should proceed with the joining ritual without delay. Every recruit must go through a secret ritual we call the joining in order to become a Grey Warden. The ritual is brief, but some preparation is required. We must begin soon.
No, there are two other recruits here already. They have been waiting for us to arrive. The joining is dangerous. I cannot speak more of it except to say that you will learn all in good time. Until then, you must trust that what is done is necessary. Feel free to explore the camp here as you wish. All I ask is that you do not leave it for the time being. There is another Grey Warden in the camp by the name of Alistair. When you are ready, seek him out and tell him it's time to summon the other recruits. Until then, I have business I must attend to. You may find me at the Grey Warden tent on the other side of this bridge, should you need to. Make a watch over you, my lord. Make a watch over you, my lord. Today, two units of men arrived every hour, and they expect to double that tomorrow. Still, the Tern worries that may not be enough. The Tower of Ishal is off-limits. The men stationed inside are securing it now. Goes back to the time of the Tevinter Imperium. Dwarven make. That's probably why it's still standing. I think they used it once to watch for wilders coming out of the forest. By orders of Tern Loghain. The tower is being secured by his men to be used during battle. I'm told they discovered some lower chambers, and they don't know how far down they go, so for now, everyone's to stay out. I didn't see anything like that when I was there, but who knows? Make a speed your steps.
Hale, you must be the Grey Warden recruit that Duncan brought. This place hasn't seen such bustle in centuries, I'll wager. Need a hand getting anywhere? Used to be a fortress long time ago, so I understand. Back in the days when the Wilders used to invade the lowlands. You were just on the eastern side of the ruin. The Tower of Ishal is there, but Tern Loganes closed it off until the battle. This side is the King's Camp. We've got the Grey Wardens here, the Circle of Magi, the Chantry. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting somebody important. This is Ferelden, isn't it? The King has his kennels on the west side of camp. Stinks from all the hounds. These aren't cute puppies, though. Some of those dogs bite the darkspawn and get too much of that blood in them. It's like poison. Slow, painful death. Terrible. A few mages, yes. They even brought those creepy, quiet fellows, the Tranquil. Gives me the shivers when they talk, all cold and even. They're to the north of here, bunched up with a herd of Templars glaring at them. Can't miss it. Probably in his tent. He and Tern Loghain are on the southwest side of the camp. The king likes to spend time with his soldiers, though. Sometimes even without his bodyguards. Drives Tern Loghain wild, that does. Quartermaster. He's just a bit to the northwest. Go on, then. Try heading north. I think he was sent with a message to the mages. Not far. It's straight ahead, just past the royal encampment. Most of your fellows are in the valley with the army, but the recruits seem to be staying up here for now. Good luck to you, then. I'm sorry. The mages, the mages must not be interrupted. Their spirits are in the Fade. The Fade is the realm of dreams and the land of the dead, or so the mages tell us. Regardless, they are not to be disturbed, not even by Grey Wardens. good folk of Ferelden, and we contemplate the death that may await. Death is no failure, my friends. Should it find you, you will not have failed your king. You will have served your maker. Die in this battle, and when you stand before the maker in the land beyond the Fade, he shall not find you wanting. Go not into death gladly, but with the knowledge that evil has been held at bay by your spilled blood. And if you go to stand beside the maker, go with our blessing, for you shall not be forgotten. My friends, let us bow our heads and remember those who have fallen and those who have yet to fall. I do not have time to speak at present, thank you. Greetings, young man. You are Duncan's newest recruit, are you not? He's not a man easily impressed. You should be proud. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Wynn, one of the mages summoned by the King. Well met, and good luck to you on the battlefield. To us all, in fact. And I'm sure you have plenty of that to offer. To defeat the Darkspawn, we have to work together. It's not an idea everyone seems able to grasp. Some. Do you? Do you know about the connection between them and the Fade, for example? Any time your spirit leaves your earthly body, whether it's to dream or to die, it passes into the realm we call the Fade. 
It's home to many spirits, some benevolent, others far less so. At the heart of the Fade lies the Black City. Some say the Black City was once the seat of the Maker. But when the mages from the Tevinter Imperium found a way into the city, it was tainted with their sin. That taint transformed those men, turning them into twisted reflections of their own hearts. And the Maker cast them back to the Earth, where they became the first Darkspawn. At least, that's what the Chant of Light says. It may be allegory, meant to teach us that our own evil causes human suffering. Or it may be true. It is as good an explanation as any for now. Worked well for me in the past. But I'm certain Duncan has more for you to do than talk to me. Back again? Don't the Grey Wardens need you? Off you go. I have preparations to make for the battle, and I won't be distracted. Greetings. King Kalen is not in his tent right now. I believe he's with the Grey Wardens in camp, drinking. He holds them in high regard, you know, as his father did. I suppose I do, though he's spending most of his time with the Grey Wardens. He rides with them wherever they go, in fact. Terran Loghain sees the King whenever he can and argues with him over coming battles, but the King just waves him off. The King wants to end the Blight with a single huge battle the Bards will sing of for centuries. Do you think that's possible? That's how the Terran feels. He'll do what the King wants in the end, though. The King thought it was funny that Terran called him reckless and they fought about the Queen. She's the Terran's daughter. He wasn't happy about something she did or the King did, I'm not sure. I probably shouldn't discuss it. As you wish. You approach the tent of Terran Loghain. State your business. How can you not know of Loghain? He helped free Ferelden. He was the brains behind King Marek's armies and drove out those damned Orlesians. King Marek rewarded him by making him a Tern. Can you imagine? A commoner became a high nobleman just like that. Without Loghain, you can bet the King wouldn't be winning against these Darkspawn. He's inside, but I don't think it's my place to discuss his activities. I suppose, as long as we talk quietly. He and the King have been arguing for days. The Tern's known the King since he was swaddled, so they don't stand on ceremony. The Tern speaks his mind, and the King yells right back. Personally, I think the King should do what Tern Logan tells him. Without the Tern, we wouldn't be doing as well here as we are. Hmm. I suppose you have a message for him. Hold on, then. Yes, what is it? Oh, you're Duncan's new Grey Warden, I assume. His Majesty could not contain his excitement after your meeting. How could I not hear about you? Kalen's fascination with the Wardens goes beyond the ordinary. Are you aware his father brought your order back to Ferelden? The Wardens are impressive, but not as relevant as Kalen thinks. You're no surface dwarf, I can see it in your eyes. Smart are the Grey Wardens to look for new recruits in Orzammar. 
I don't suppose you'll be riding into the thick of battle with the rest of your fellows, will you? Here for the glory, huh? Fair enough. Now I must return to my task. Pray that our king proves amenable to wisdom, if you're the praying sort. He is Marik's son, and the leader of my beloved Ferelden, and a very young man. I try to keep that in mind, as should you. Hmm, this isn't good. I'd hate to waste such a promising member of the breed. Are you the new warden? I could use some help. This is a Mabari. Smart breed and strong. His owner died in the last battle, and the poor hound swallowed darkspawn blood. I have medicine that might help, but I need him muzzled first. Centuries ago, a mage bred them to be smart and understand what they're told. They can remember and carry out complex orders. Most valuable dogs in the world. Trouble is, they generally imprint to one master. Re-imprinting them is very difficult. But without the medicine, re-imprinting won't be an issue. Will you help? We can try, but first we need to muzzle and medicate him. You're a Grey Warden, or soon will be. All Wardens are immune to the Darkspawn taint. The most you have to worry about is some tooth marks. Go in the pen and let him smell you. We'll know right away if he'll respond. Let's hope this works. I'd really hate to have to put him down. Well done. Now I can treat the dog properly, poor fella. Come to think of it, are you heading into the wilds any time soon? There's a particular herb I could use to improve the dog's chances. It's a flower that grows in the swamps here, if I remember. If you happen across it, I could use it. It's very distinctive, all white, with a blood-red center. It usually grows in dead wood that collects at the edge of ground pools. Should be plenty this time of year. If he doesn't get it, chances are he'll need to be put down. The wilds are off limits to non-soldiers, and I have many other hounds under my care. Good. In the meantime, I'll begin treating our poor friend You there, Elf. What's your name? Uh, it, it, it's Pick, sir. Go tell Turn Logan that the war party's ready to begin scouting. We'll send word if we find anything amiss. Yes, sir. Right, right away, sir. Hello? I, I'm sorry, is there something you needed? I deliver messages around the camp. You have a message for me? Then what is... Oh, wait! Are you the one I'm supposed to give Sir Garland's sword to? Because I think the smith's done with it. Oh, that's such a relief. You really saved me from the switch for sure. I'd best get back to my duties again before I get in more trouble.
You're the dwarf who walks with the Grey Wardens. A respectable decision. Some, like all Ash Warriors, our training originates from the dwarves. Is there something you wanted? We have no time for idle chatter. We aren't. We're Ash Warriors, as you should well know. Our discipline was passed down to us from the time of Luthias the Dwarf son. He trained with the berserkers of your kind, long ago. Perhaps. I've never been, so I cannot say for certain. But I'm told our traditions are the same. We harness the rage inside us, nurture it, and draw it out so we cannot fall in battle until our last foe is slain. It is a dwarven discipline, but we've adapted it to let us fight alongside our hounds. That is our way. I trust my hound with my life, as he trusts me with his. A trained Mabari hound is as dangerous as any sword. We do not speak of a city pet or, or those things that sit in an old woman's lab. They use scent to distinguish us from our enemies, but the blood of battle can confuse them. So we paint ourselves with Cadiz, which overpowers the blood, and also paint our hounds so they know we are the same. Why? Would you steal our caddis and give it to the Darkspawn Hordes? Good. I hear death is unpleasant. To scout the wilds and watch the progression of the Darkspawn Horde. With luck, we'll find and slaughter many stragglers. The hunt will be good if my hound survives the blood of his prey. If he dies, I shall mourn tonight. Darkspawn blood is poisonous, but not always fatal. Those who survive grow immune to its effects. The wardens say the tainted blood drives even the survivors mad eventually. But not today. Today, we hunt and we kill. They fight at our side. We don't fret over their safety as if they were children. My thanks. There is hunting to be done, and I'll not be kept from it. It's good to have Grey Wardens amongst us. With their help, perhaps we can push these things back underground for good. Hey, you're one of Duncan's new recruits, correct? I can't let you through to the Korkari Wilds until he gives the word. The Korkari Wilds is a dangerous place, more so now that it crawls with Darkspawn. They say the Great Blight began deep within its forests. One of our scouting patrols has been gone for three days. We're taking bets on who got them first, the Darkspawn or the Witches of the Wilds. Oh, sure. There's an old legend in these parts about Flemeth, the apostate sorceress who conquered this area centuries ago. She united the chasing barbarians and invaded the farmlands. That's when the great hero, Cormac, destroyed her army with his. Took her head right off, so they say. Her daughters survived and became the Witches of the Wild. Tales tell of them plaguing this area since, mostly superstitions, stealing babies and spoiling milk. I'm here, you'll get an earful about those witches. Locals blame them for near everything. At any rate, that's why Duncan doesn't want you wandering out without his say-so. Hail. Sorry, like I said, I can't let you through. Take care. In the name of Andraste, I bless you today. 
May you find favor in the Maker's eyes. So let it be. Ah, I suspect you are one of the new Grey Wardens. Will you accept the Maker's blessing? I do. Though I cannot pass on the respects of your ancestors, the Maker looks kindly on all who will receive him. Then I bless you, Grey Warden, in the name of Andraste and the Maker above. May the chant of light carry your name to the ears of our Lord. Those darkspawn can't be killed. They're evil things sent by the Maker to punish. Have you seen one of them close up? Greetings. You must be the third recruit we've heard about. Sir Jury is my name. I hailed from Redcliffe, where I served as knight under the command of Arl Eamon. I wasn't aware dwarves could be Grey Wardens. I've only seen a few of your folk in the castle dealing with the smithy. Of course, my father was the castle smith, so I encountered dwarves through him. I hope we're both lucky enough to eventually join the Wardens. Is it not thrilling to be given that chance? I fought hard to get here. Impressing Duncan was not easy. Tell me, has anyone told you what this joining ritual entails? I had no idea I'd be tested more than I already had been. I suppose since you're finally here, I'd best get back to Duncan. I shall see you there. Huh. Someone finally comes and talks to the lone prisoner. I don't suppose you've come to sentence me. No. They put someone like me in a cage until someone important has time to decide what to do with me. I don't suppose you have a bit of kindness in you. All I want is food and water. They haven't fed me since I was locked up and I'm starving. I'm a deserter. Or so they think. I bet there's no arguing them out of it, though. Armies are funny that way. I wasn't deserting. But when you catch someone sneaking around camp in the middle of the night, what else are you going to think? Does it matter? All I want is a bit of food and water. <laughs> You're a funny one. They wouldn't listen to some dwarf no matter what you think. Thanks for the laugh, though. And it's not as if they're wrong. I probably would have deserted later. Just not when they caught me is all. Hope that doesn't spoil your opinion of me. I'm still hungry enough to eat my shoe. Because you might want something I don't need. Them circle wizards got a chest they keep things in. Magical things. And I stole the key. That's why I'm here. I got one of them drunk, took his key and tried to sneak to the chest. They assumed I was deserting. I can't use it from here. But I'd trade you for some food and water. I swallowed it, but it's uh, come back into my possession since then, so to speak. Yeah, well, do you want the key or not? Just ask my guard for his. He's still got some dinner. I saw him put it in his coat. Lucky dog. You Grey Wardens get to ride with the King while I'm left with the drudgery of guarding this deserter. They should have just hanged him. Put his head on a pike as an example. Why does anyone want to desert? 
because he thinks he's going to die and he's a bloody coward, that's why. Either that or he's been listening to a bunch of hogwash about how the Darkspawn will drag you off and eat you. They say he was recruited before the war up in Dinnerham. Probably figured he'd never have to fight if he served the king, right? Don't expect it was an enlightening conversation. What a surprise. Another innocent prisoner. At any rate, it's not for me to say. He'll get his day to plead his case, or he won't. It's all the same to me. Did he now? Since nobody sends me nothing to feed him with, the only way we'll get that is if I give him mine. All right, all right. I guess the poor fella could stand to have one meal in his belly before he hangs. Don't know why you care. I had nothing to do with it, though. If anyone asks why he's burping, I'm gonna say it was you. Just so you know. Oh. All done. So? Brought me some food, have you? I'm so hungry I could faint dead away. Much obliged. May Andraste herself rain blessings upon you. And, as I mentioned, here's the key. Use it in good health, eh? He calls. I. You may can't not want to remain it. here long, Warden. Most of these men have been tainted by the Darkspawn blood. You... you need to convince them. We've got to run. The Darkspawn are coming. The Grey Wardens will die. The King will die. We'll all die. I apologize, Warden. He's been like this ever since they found him in the wilds. The commander who brought him here didn't seem to think so. You... you can feel it, can't you? They taint the land, turn it black and sick. Oh, you can feel it inside. They'll come out of that forest and spread. Like caterpillars covering a tree. They'll swallow us whole. Uh, that's quite enough out of you. You need to calm yourself, my good man. They were everywhere. I saw them. I don't want to see any more. I close my eyes and... Please, just leave me be. So, any last wishes I can help fulfill before you head into battle? Life is fleeting, you know. That pretty face could be decorating some darkspawn spear this time tomorrow. Well, you're not what I thought you'd be. Not a dwarf, yet here you are. The name's Davith. <laughs> it's about bloody time you came along. I was beginning to think they'd cook this ritual up just for our benefit. <laughs> that depends on what kind of life you've led. Me, I'm perfectly willing to accept that this joining is some kind of punishment. I happened to be sneaking around camp last night, see, and I heard a couple of Grey Wardens talking. So, I listen in for a bit. I'm thinking they plan to send us into the wilds. We're right on the northern edge of the Kakari Wilds here, miles and miles of savage country. My home village isn't far, and I grew up on tales about the wilds. Even been in there a few times. <laughs> Scary place. Cannibals, beasts, witches, and now Darkspawn. What isn't to be scared of? It's all too secretive for me. Makes my nose twitch. I guess we'll have to wait and see, <laughs> like we have a choice.
I suppose I could do that. Anyway, I expect it's time to get back to Duncan. That's where I'll be if you need me for anything. I have finished. Have you seen an elf running about? Young woman, red hair, carrying a suit of chain. Oh, well, I'd like to know where she went, that's what. Ah, oh, pardon my manners. My troubles are no concern of yours, I'm sure. Oh, I'm the quartermaster. Did you come for supplies? Oh, I'm sure you have better things to do than run errands for me. I can find her myself. Arms and armor, for the most part. It's for the King's men, but uh, you Grey Wardens can buy what you need for a modest price. I also have some uh, goods on the side I can provide. Strictly off the record, of course. To keep morale up, you understand. <laughs> That course of action is inadvisable. Welcome, young man. I am one of the Tranquil, my friend. I am of the Circle of Magi. But instead of casting spells and reading tomes, I spend my time enchanting. It is a time-consuming process, but invaluable. Enchantment provides the Circle its wealth. Certainly, we would not get by on charity. It is the practice of folding magical lyrium into items first practiced by the Dwarves. The Tranquil have learned their runes, and we use them to apply a... We create the glow lights, as well as the magic staff or the flaming blade. The irony, perhaps, is that it is our very disconnection to our former talents that allows the Tranquil to work with Lyrium so. A true mage could not. 
Runes exist that hold the power of the elements that increase strength or swiftness. Almost any spell can be given permanency, given enough skill and lyrium. Naturally, the greater the power required, the more expensive the rune will become to create. True power comes with a price, as we know only too well. Allow me to put it this way. Do you know why those with magical talent are feared? Those with magical talent attract demons and spirits. We can be possessed easily and thus become horrors known as abominations. Even those with minor talents attract hungry spirits. Anyone with the power may learn blood magic from these demons. Hence, we are considered dangerous. This is our curse. Thus, I was made tranquil, stripped of emotions and talent. I am no longer dangerous. Our forehead is branded with magic, which stills our talent and mind. The process is irreversible as far as I am aware. You do? I feel nothing. As the name suggests, my existence is quite peaceful. I am alive, productive, and no danger to anyone. Surely that is not a terrible thing. Perhaps we may speak of something else. Do you need assistance? Goodbye. Welcome, young man. Indeed, the Circle makes tranquil those with insufficient skill to become a mage. We lose our emotions, but can still play a vital role in the Circle. The brand is a minor price to pay. I am pleased to serve as a merchant and artisan, and people do not fear me as they do mages. Goodbye. What is it now? Haven't Grey Wardens asked more than enough of the Circle? I simply came to deliver a message from the Revered Mother, Sir Mage. She desires your presence. What Her Reverence desires is of no concern to me. I am busy helping the Grey Wardens, by the King's orders, I might add. Should I have asked her to write a note? Tell her I will not be harassed in this manner. Yes, I was harassing you by delivering a message. Your glibness does you no credit. Here I thought we were getting along so well. I was even going to name one of my children after you. The Grumpy One. Enough. I will speak to the woman if I must. Get out of my way, fool. You know, one good thing about the Blight is how it brings people together. It's like a party. We could all stand in a circle and hold hands. That would give the Darkspawn something to think about. Wait, we haven't met, have we? I don't suppose you happen to be another mage. And that makes you Duncan's new recruit, I suppose. Glad to meet you. As the junior member of the Order, I'll be accompanying you 
when you prepare for the joining. Right, that was the name. Hmm. There haven't been any Dwarven Grey Wardens in some time. You must know a lot about Darkspawn. Hard to believe most folks here think the Darkspawn disappeared after the last blight, when your people still suffer every day. Anyhow, whenever you're ready, let's get back to Duncan. I imagine he's eager to get things started. Davith and Sir Jory are here in the camp. Have you met them? That makes things easy then. They'll both be back with Duncan by now. With the mage. The circle is here at the king's request, and the chantry doesn't like that one bit. They just love letting mages know how unwelcome they are, which puts me in a bit of an awkward position. I was once a Templar. Not that that's all Templars do, but yes, the Chantry raised me until Duncan recruited me six months ago. I'm sure the revered mother meant it as an insult, sending me as her messenger, and the mage picked right up on that. I never would have agreed to deliver it, but Duncan says we're all to cooperate and get along. Apparently they didn't get the same speech. You do? Huh. That's a switch. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, lead on. Complete. That course of action is inadvisable. Soldiers for Elden. My You found Alistair, did you? Good. I'll assume you're ready to begin preparations. Assuming, of course, that you're quite finished riling up mages, Alistair. What can I say? The revered mother ambushed me. The way she wields guilt, they should stick her in the army. She forced you to sass the mage, did she? We cannot afford to antagonize anyone, Alistair. We don't need to give anyone more ammunition against us. You're right, Duncan. I apologize. Now then, since you're all here, we can begin. You four will be heading into the Kokari Wilds to perform two tasks. The first is to obtain three vials of darkspawn blood, one for each recruit. For the joining itself, I'll explain more once you've returned. <laughs> Without a doubt, Darkspawn aren't renowned for their willingness to offer up their blood. There was once a Grey Warden archive in the wilds, abandoned long ago when we could no longer afford to maintain such remote outposts. It has recently come to our attention that some scrolls have been left behind, magically sealed to protect them. Alistair, I want you to retrieve these scrolls if you can. It will be an overgrown ruin by now, but the sealed chest should remain intact. Alistair will guide you to the area you need to search. Old treaties, if you're curious. Promises of support made to the Grey Wardens long ago. They were once considered only formalities. With so many having forgotten their commitments to us, I suspect it may be a good idea to have something to remind them with. Watch over your charges, Alistair. Return quickly and safely. We will. Then may the Maker watch over your path. I will see you when you return. Welcome to the King's Camp, my lord. 
Right away. They can't see you, they can't kill you. Yes. Hail. I'm told you all have business in the wilds. The gate's open for you. Just be careful out there. Even a Grey Warden won't be safe in the forest tonight. Who told these things to come and play? Desire. Over here. Who is that? Grey Wardens? Well, he's not half as dead as he looks, is he? My scouting band was attacked by Darkspawn. They came out of the ground. Please, help me. I've got to return to camp. I have bandages in my pack. Thank you. Um, I... I've got to get out of here. Did you hear? An entire patrol of seasoned men killed by Darkspawn. Calm down, Sir Jory. We'll be fine if we're careful. Those soldiers were careful, and they were still overwhelmed. How many Darkspawn can the four of us slay? A dozen? A hundred? There's an entire army in these forests. There are Darkspawn about, but we're in no danger of walking into the bulk of the Horde. How do you know? I'm not a coward, but this is foolish and reckless. We should go back. I still do not relish the thought of encountering an army. Know this. All Grey Wardens can sense Darkspawn. Whatever their cunning, I guarantee they won't take us by surprise. You see, Sir Knight, we might die, but we'll be warned about it first. That is... reassuring. That doesn't mean I'm here to make this easy, however. So let's get a move on. It appears we will need to fight the Blight one at a time.
Look there. Poor slobs. That just seems so excessive. Oh, look, Darkspawn. What a surprise. Dark spot, I see. <laughs> 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 So I shall. Oh. Desire. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
Here I am. Try not to stain the shirt, it's new.
And so I shall. Well, well. What have we here? Are you a vulture, I wonder? A scavenger, poking amidst a corpse whose bones were long since cleaned? Or merely an intruder? Come into these dark spawn filled wilds of mine in search of easy prey. What say you, hmm? Scavenger or intruder? You are the intruder here. I believe the first question is rightfully mine. I have watched your progress for some time. Where do they go, I wondered. Why are they here? And now you disturb ashes none have touched for so long. Why is that? Don't answer her. She looks chastened, and that means others may be nearby. Oh, you fear barbarians will swoop down upon you? Yes. Swooping is bad. She's a witch of the wilds, she is. She'll turn us into toads. Witch of the wilds. Such idle fancies, those legends. Have you no minds of your own? You there, dwarf. You have nothing to fear from any witch. Tell me your name, and I shall tell you mine. Let us be civilized. Now that is a proper civil greeting, even here in the wilds. You may call me Morrigan. Shall I guess your purpose? You sought something in that chest? Something that is here no longer? Here no longer? You stole them, didn't you? You're some kind of sneaky witch thief. How very eloquent. How does one steal from dead men? Quite easily, it seems. Those documents are Grey Warden property, and I suggest you return them. I will not, for it was not I who removed them. Invoke a name that means nothing here any longer if you wish. I am not threatened. Twas my mother, in fact. Yes, my mother. Did you assume I spawned from a log? A thieving, weird talking log, perhaps? Not all in the wilds are monsters. Flowers grow as well as toads. If you wish, I will take you to my mother. 
Tis not far from here, and you may ask her for your papers, if you like. We should get those treaties, but I dislike this Morrigan's sudden appearance. It's too convenient. Have I been dishonest? Some call us witches, yes, but purely out of superstition. You know what the Circle of Magi is, don't you? The Circle requires an accounting of all mages. That is the law of the land and the Chantry. If you wish to tell your Chantry about me, go ahead. I have nothing to fear from priests. She prefers her privacy, but I imagine she will be curious enough why you are here. Come, see for yourself. Why not? I do not meet many people here. Are you all so mistrustful? She'll put us all in the pot, she will. Just you watch. If the pot's warmer than this forest, it'll be a nice change. Follow me then, if it pleases you. Greetings, Mother. I bring before you four Grey Wardens who... I see them, girl. Hmm. Much as I expected. Are we supposed to believe you were expecting us? You are required to do nothing, least of all believe. Shut one's eyes tight or open one's arms wide. Either way, one's a fool. She's a witch, I tell you. We shouldn't be talking to her. Quiet, Dabbit. If she's really a witch, do you want to make her mad? There is a smart lad. Sadly irrelevant to the larger scheme of things, but it is not I who decides. Believe what you will. And what of you? Does your dwarven mind give you a different viewpoint? What do you believe? Oh, if you must protest so quickly, perhaps I need not ask. So much about you is uncertain. And yet I believe. Do I? Why, it seems I do. So this is a dreaded Witch of the Wilds. Witch of the Wilds, huh? Morrigan must have told you that. She fancies such tales, though she would never admit it. Oh, how she dances under the moon. <laughs> they did not come to listen to your wild tales, Mother. True. They came for their treaties, yes? And before you begin barking, your precious seal wore off long ago. I have protected these. You... Oh, you protected them. And why not? Take them to your Grey Wardens and tell them this Blight's threat is greater than they realize. Either the threat is more, or they realize less. Or perhaps the threat is nothing. <laughs> or perhaps they realize nothing. <laughs> oh, do not mind me. <laughs> you have what you came for. Time for you to go, then. Do not be ridiculous, girl. These are your guests. Oh, very well. I will show you out of the woods. Follow me. I see we stop to smell the flowers and adore the sunshine. The Mabari stable for now, but not improving. Unless I get that herb I told you about, there's not much hope. Let me see. Yeah, that's exactly it. Wonderful. Uh, give me a moment, and I'll make this into an ointment. <sighs> he looks better already. I'm sure he'd thank you himself if he could. A day, maybe two. 
There's enough ointment for him to make a full recovery. Why not come back after the battle? Perhaps we can see about imprinting him on you. Maybe. It's likely he understands you're responsible for curing him. Mabari are at least as smart as your average tax collector. Come back after the battle and just... Or take another look. Hello again. Is there something you need? Some supplies, perhaps? So long as... So you return from the wilds. Have you been successful? Good. I've had the Circle Mages preparing. With the blood you've retrieved, we can begin the joining immediately. There was a woman at the tower, and her mother had the scrolls. They were both very... odd. Were they wilder folk? I don't think so. They might be apostates. Mages hiding from the Chantry. I know you were once a Templar, Alistair, but Chantry business is not ours. We have the scrolls. Let us focus on the joining. I will not lie. We Grey Wardens pay a heavy price to become what we are. Fate may decree that you pay your price now rather than later. If only such secrecy were unnecessary and all understood the necessity of such sacrifice. Sadly, that will never be so. Let's go then. I'm anxious to see this joining now. I agree. Let's have it done. Then let us begin. Alistair, take them to the old temple. The more I hear about this joining, the less I like it. Are you blubbering again? Why all these damn tests? Have I not earned my place? Maybe it's tradition. Maybe they're just trying to annoy you. I only know that my wife is in Hyover with a child on the way. If they had warned me, I... It just doesn't seem fair. Would you have come if they'd warned you? Maybe that's why they don't. The Wardens do what they must, right? Including sacrificing us? I'd sacrifice a lot more if I... You saw those darkspawns tonight. 
Wouldn't you die to protect your pretty wife from them? I am... Maybe you'll die. Maybe we'll all die. If nobody stops the Darkspawn, we'll die for sure. I've just never faced a foe I could not engage with my blade. At last, we come to the joining. The Grey Wardens were founded during the First Blight, when humanity stood on the verge of annihilation. So it was that the first Grey Wardens drank of Darkspawn blood and mastered their taint. We're going to drink the blood of those... those creatures? As the first Grey Wardens did before us, as we did before you. This is the source of our power and our victory. Those who survive the joining become immune to the taint. We can sense it in the Darkspawn and use it to slay the Archdemon. Not all who drink the blood will survive, and those who do are forever changed. This is why the joining is a secret. It is the price we pay. We speak only a few words prior to the joining, but these words have been said since the first. Alistair, if you would. Join us, brothers and sisters. Join us in the shadows where we stand vigilant. Join us... And should you perish, know that your sacrifice will not be forgotten. And that one day, we shall join you. Davith, step forward. Step forward, Jory. But... I have a wife. A child. Had I known... There is no turning back. No! You ask too much. Th there is no glory in this. I am sorry. But the joining is not yet complete. You are called upon to submit yourself to the taint for the greater good. From this moment forth, you are a Grey Warden. Two more deaths. In my joining, only one of us died, but it was horrible. I'm glad at least one of you made it through. How do you feel? Jory was warned that there was no turning back, as were you all. When he went for his blade, however, he left me no choice. It brought me no pleasure to end his life. The Blight demands sacrifices from us all. Thankfully, you stand here as proof. They are not all made in vain. Did you have dreams? I had terrible dreams after my joining. Such dreams come when you begin to sense the dark spawn, as we all do. That and many other things can be explained in the months to come. Before I forget, there is one last part to your joining. We take some of that blood and put it in a pendant. Something to remind us of those who didn't make it this far. Take some time. When you're ready, I'd like you to accompany me to a meeting with the King. The King is discussing strategy for the upcoming battle. 
I am not sure why he has requested your presence. The meeting is to the west, down the stairs. Please attend as soon as you're able. Speak more after the meeting with the king. If the king wants to see you and Duncan, you probably shouldn't keep him waiting. He might get mad, start crying. You'll feel bad and, well, it won't be pretty. Logain, my decision is final. I will stand by the Grey Wardens in this assault. You risk too much, Caelan. A Darkspawn Horde is too dangerous for you to be playing hero on the front lines. If that's the case, perhaps we should wait for the Orlesian forces to join us after all. I must repeat my protest to your full notion that we need the Orlesians to defend ourselves. It is not a full notion. Our arguments with the Orlesians are a thing of the past, and you will remember who is king. How fortunate Marek did not live to see his son ready to hand Ferelden over to those who enslaved us for a century. Then our current forces will have to suffice, won't they? Duncan, are your men ready for battle? They are, Your Majesty. And this is the recruit I met earlier on the road? I understand congratulations are in order. Every Grey Warden is needed now. You should be honored to join their ranks. Your fascination with glory and legends will be your undoing, Kalen. We must attend to reality. Fine. Speak your strategy. The Grey Wardens and I draw the Darkspawn into charging our lines, and then? You will alert the tower to light the beacon, signaling my men to charge from To cover. flank the Darkspawn, I remember. This is the Tower of Ishal in the ruins, yes? Well, who shall light this beacon? I have a few men stationed there. It's not a dangerous task, but it is vital. Then we should send our best. Send Alistair and the new Grey Warden to make sure it's done. We need the beacon. Without it, Loghain's men won't know when to charge. You see? Glory for everyone. You rely on these Grey Wardens too much. Is that truly wise? Enough of your conspiracy theories, Loghain. Grey Wardens battle the Blight no matter where they're from. Your Majesty, you should consider the possibility of the Arch Demon appearing. There have been no signs of any dragons in the wilds. Isn't that what your men are here for, Duncan? I... Yes, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, the tower and its beacon are unnecessary. The we will of not Major. trust any lives to your spells, mage. Save them for the Darkspawn. Enough! This plan will suffice. The Grey Wardens will light the beacon. Thank you, Loghain. I cannot wait for that glorious moment. The Grey Wardens battle beside the King of Ferelden to stem the tide of evil. Yes, Kaelin. A glorious moment for us all. You heard the plan. 
You and Alistair will go to the Tower of Ishal and ensure the beacon is lit. What? I won't be in the battle. This is by the King's personal request, Alistair. If the beacon is not lit, Terran Logain's men won't know when to charge. So he needs two Grey Wardens standing up there holding the torch, just in case, right? The tower is on the other side of the gorge from the King's camp, the way we came when we arrived. You'll need to cross the gorge and head through the gate and up to the tower entrance. From the top, you'll overlook the entire valley. I will be fighting beside the King with the rest of the Grey Wardens, again at his request. We will signal you when the time is right. Alistair will know what to look for. The battle is about to begin. Once I leave, move quickly. You'll have less than an hour. Of course, even the best laid plans go awry. So do what you must. I trust you both. Just not enough to actually fight with the rest of you. <laughs> there will be plenty of battles, Alistair. Be patient. We soil our drawers, that's what. If it does, leave it to us. I want no heroics from either of you. Stay with the Terran's men and guard the tower. If you are needed, we will send word. Then I must join the others. From here, you two are on your own. Remember, you are both Grey Wardens. I expect you to be worthy of that title. Duncan, may the Maker watch over you. May he watch over us all. Let's just get to the tower. May not be the most glamorous job, but we'd best not dawdle. The plan will work, Your Majesty. Of course it will. The blight ends here.
Let's cross the bridge and get to the tower of Ishal. Alright guys, thanks for uh, hanging with the stream. I'm gonna call it a night for now, and uh, if y'all want me to pick back up, I will do so. Thanks for watching y'all. Have a great night, or morning, or afternoon, whatever. Take it easy y'all.